why do we do restoration work to have others get their rights back to vote? Uh, I'm a returning citizen too from uh, having a family charge. And when I first started to get, uh, try to get my rights back to vote, they gave me a book. I went to my probation office and they gave me a book. And I started figuring it out and I got disinherited. And I put it to the side for about a year. And then I heard about uh, Virginia organizers and I got introduced to Nick and that uh, I went to one meeting and one meeting turned into another meeting and another meeting and here I am three years later <laughs> still with Virginia organizers. But, uh, I decided to start working again on getting my rights back to vote because I wanted a voice. You know, we can say what we want to say about people being in office, but if you don't vote, your voice really don't count for nothing. You need to be able to go to that poll and cast your vote so that some of these people that's in office that shouldn't be there won't be there because they won't get the votes or they won't get enough votes to get in there. But uh, I appreciate uh, really what the governor has done to make it much easier for a person to get their rights back to vote. Like I said, when I started out the first time it was a book, and then it cut down to like five pages, I think, and that's when I went, went ahead and got my rights back to vote. And now it's one page. And if you don't have a violent crime, it's a half a page. And if you don't want to do the paperwork, you can go online and do it. Or you can just set the call to call a secretary of Commonwealth and get your rights restored back to vote. Everybody should be able to vote. I never thought that voting was important when I was young. I, I made my first vote when I was 50 years, 51 years old. And I felt kind of odd because I went to the polls and I didn't know what to do. And I was kind of embarrassed to ask somebody, but you know, that's what I had to do because I never voted before in my life. But as I got older and I saw what, you know, politics was all about and how important it is uh, for who be in, in different offices, you know, we, I, had to go, I had to get my right to vote. And not only to vote, but I might want to hold a public office. And some job that you go uh, apply for, they want you to have your uh, rights back to vote. You know, if you don't have it, then some of them don't even want to talk to you. Not only did I get my rights back to vote, but I was, got certified back through the state police office. I went and paid the, uh, paid the $5 fee. You know, they find out you, they put you in the database, and that comes up on, on your record. And I've, I've had to use it, and it's good to have it. You know, but uh, getting your rights back to vote and being able to vote is very important. It's important and it's very beneficial to not only just you, but to other people too. Because a lot of people may not know how important it is to vote, but your vote can help them. Your conversation with them can help them decide that they need to walk, to get their rights back if they don't have them, and go out and vote. Voting is very important. I could talk a long time, but I got no more time. They said five minutes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, if you're not able to vote, if you know somebody that's not able to vote, help them out. Help them get their rights back. It's important. We need to get the right people in the right places so that we don't lose health care insurance. We don't lose or uh, get higher taxes. And they can get rid of some of these places that we don't need, the payday lenders, this, this uh, government or people's paychecks from week to week. You know, we need to get the right people in the right place. Get your rights back to vote. Anybody that don't uh, know uh, or have a paperwork, they got paperwork here, take some of it back with you, share it with somebody that you know that might not have the rights to vote, and talk to them and tell them how important it is to vote. Thank you for your time. chapter of Virginia Organizing. I came in contact with this organization through a member of my church. I'm sure many of you know her, Sheva Carter. 
I was interested in getting my rights restored. And um, I was directed to her by my pastor. And it has been a wonderful, wonderful ride. I was a nurse for 35 years. I was in a situation where I was being mugged and I fought back to protect myself. And in so doing, I incurred a felony. After 35 years of nursing and uh, being an outstanding member, member of the community, I ended up at Pruvana State Prison here in Virginia, right outside of Charlottesville. The uh, prosecuting attorney wanted to give me 20 years for malicious wounding. Thank God I had a lawyer that got it played down to three years because even though I was protecting myself, I injured another party. And in Virginia, the laws are so strict and some so backward that it doesn't matter who your attorney is or who you are or the reasoning behind your uh, action, you could end up like I did. So just because your life is going well, it can be turned upside down in a moment. I'm going to give you the condensed version of my uh, battle. I uh, have been in Virginia organizing for 16 months now. On August 15th of last year, I got my right back to vote. introduced by Sheila Carter and guided by Teresa Stanley, Devil Graham, and Gerard Brown. My cause at the time was for my individual self. But once getting introduced, even though I'm a grandmother and a great-grandmother, and I don't have any children in the school system, it is just the horror of the Norfolk City school system. And it doesn't affect my children, but it affects my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. And in about 58 days, I'll turn 65. So the health care form is my new stage, my new project, and the educational system. Because it is so crazy, the health system, the way it's set up, the way it's going, and with the new changes in insurance and our health laws, it is almost impossible to get proper care. So uh, my battle started with restoration of rights, and I encourage anyone who knows anyone that's a battle to connect with someone in the cities around you. In my experience, I was able to help six other people get their rights back. So, the of a pebble being dropped into a pond, I was the pebble. But the circulation has reached out and touched my family, my church, my community, and hopefully someone in other parts of the state don't sit by and let your life pass by. I, uh, right now, I'm working on getting my pardon. And even though I'm almost 65, I do not plan ever to be active in trauma nursing, which is my specialty. But I want to work, and I love working with people. So I can open my own business. I'm going to pursue the Virginia State Nursing Board to return my license to me, and I have to take the test over, but that's not an issue. Your life is important. You are somebody. Don't give up. Use Virginia Organizing to be your stepping stone. Thank you.
So recently, I think a few weeks ago, we had a Charlottesville City Council Candidates Forum that I think sometime in the summer, Joe sat another intern night down and he's like, you guys are going to organize a candidates forum. We're like, okay. <laughs> but it's kind of doubtful. But it happened. We had planned it way before August 12th, but after the violence on um, August 12th and August 11th, it got a lot, a lot more attention because we were talking about the city council. We had six candidates there, and we ended up filling up the entire city hall and overflow room and just telling people to try to squeeze in. It was so powerful. Um, organizing a candidates forum shows how we, as a nonpartisan organization, are able to do electoral work and bring attention to our issues. We purposely did it early on in the election cycle so that our issues continue to be brought up throughout their campaigns. We gave all candidates, the independent and the parties, and the um, Democratic candidates, a chance to speak equal and talk about what they wanted. We really intentionally chose our questions specifically, asking for things like to specific policies that were pursued, so we would avoid the vague non-answer answer that politicians seem to like to do. And we intentionally, we didn't have an open mic. We didn't want to have lines of people shouting and getting out of hand. So we had people submit questions ahead of time and during it on note cards, and then pick through, sort them into categories, and made sure the things we want to address fully addressed. And so everything was planned out ahead of time. The candidates didn't know the questions, so it was interesting to see their immediate reactions, but everyone else, we knew them. And so just, it's not, does it take a huge amount of work to plan a candidates forum? And it's really a good way to make sure the town can come together and see how important it is to be involved in local elections. Thank you. Great, so another round of applause for John and Barbara and Emma. And so this was just to give folks a taste, and I know you all know this because a lot of you are doing it in your local chapters, right? But just because we're not out there necessarily endorsing any of the candidates, we're working because we know there are too many people across our state that every day are faced with these issues, are faced with a payday loan, have been told, sorry, uh, you're not able to come to this meeting or you shouldn't take part in this process. Sorry, you've got a health care bill. Here's $30,000 for the treatment you had to just have, but we're not going to cover that. Too many people are out there hurting and suffering, and we found one way in our experience to go about trying to build power for ourselves and with others through civic engagement. 